What's up guys, it's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down three things that all short wide receivers need to be doing to be successful against taller, bigger, more physical DBs. So I hope this video helps you guys out, but also you guys, if you're a wide receiver and you need to get faster the remainder of this offseason, you guys want to improve your explosiveness, your get-off speed, everything that's going to tie into the wide receiver position in the gym, check out that very first link in the description below for our wide receiver gym bundle. What you'll get access to is an eight-week daily wide receiver gym schedule schedule with all the exercises you should do mapped out with sets, reps, and example of each one. So check out that very first link below, fellas, if you're interested in our eight-week long gym schedule for wide receivers specifically. Let's get started. So first release here, this is going to be like a wide step release from the Seattle Seahawks receiver. So main thing about this, how this equates to short guys, is that you have to get comfortable operating outside of DB's frame. So what you see a lot of receiver coaches out there, they teach the real short, choppy movements. They say, like, oh, you want to move with your head and your shoulders. That'll get the DB to bite. But at the end of the day, when you are a shorter guy and you're going up against a bigger physical guy, what's the bigger physical guy probably going to try to do? Get hands on you, right? Because obviously you're smaller than he is, and he's going to try to get hands on you to jam you, force you to the sideline, now, to screw up timing with the quarterback, essentially. So as a wide receiver, I need to make sure that I'm actually threatening him outside of his frame to try to get him to move off the platform. Because when I can get a DB to move off the platform, that makes my job a lot easier to swat hands, get hands off of him, and get up into the route. So we decide to go with something here called a wide step release. So a wide step is where you step with this. And this is a great release for shorter guys to use, by the way. A wide step release is where you maybe do this kick step behind. You take like a prep step with the front foot. But you essentially step with this back foot wide outside a defender's frame to get him to jump to the fade, get him to play the fade so we could take inside release. So that's what he does. He kicks behind and he throws wide. Now you see how wide he is stepping and how his hips and shoulders are actually committed to the outside. Fellas, that's what it takes to get space. So many guys don't understand that it's about actually threatening this DB vertically. Now guys will try to do this and they'll go lateral. They'll come off the line and they'll step like right there. They'll step laterally. That doesn't threaten the DB vertical, and that DB is just going to sit. As a shorter guy, you probably bring some speed to the table. You're probably on the faster side of things. So when you're on the faster side of things, you actually got to use that to your advantage. Let's threaten him vertically. Let's attack it almost like a 45 degree because that right there actually looks like a fade. That's what's going to get this DB to move. Bigger guy, quicker, faster guy, whatever it is. That will get that DB to move when we can threaten him vertically and give yourself more space to the inside to win on the route. Because you see, again, everybody's so afraid when they're on the shorter side of things. What if this DB gets hands? He's bigger than me. He's stronger. What if he gets hands? But fellas, when you understand that when you move him off the platform and then he tries to throw hands, all it takes is just a little dip of the shoulder, a little swat of the hands, and his hips will lock out and he will get stuck. But you can set that up from the footwork position. Like same idea, like let's go back to the top. Like let's say you wanted to run like a fade route. And let's say this DB's lined up inside shade. It's not, he's head up. He's not, in this case, he's head up. But let's say, for example, he's inside shade. You would want to attack him here on almost like a 45 to the inside because if I could get him to jump to the outside or jump to the inside, keep his leverage, and he tries to shoot hands with his left hand, all it takes is just a swat of that left hand and I'm off the press. But if I just try to run to the outside or I just try to give some kind of quick move and this DB stays square where he can get two hands on me, he could extend, he could be at that full strength position, I'm not gonna get off that press. It comes from the feet, fellas. You have to set him up with the feet to work him off that platform. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Great job by this wide receiver displaying that wide step release and then being able to finish. All right, so now we're gonna look at this router from Tyreek Hill. So the speed excuse that everybody uses with Tyreek, it does not apply in this situation because where is he lined up? He's on like the two-yard line, right? So obviously he can't just run past this DB. He's going to rely on his technique. And one of the things that shorter guys need to understand is that against bigger DBs, you can't give them any chance to react when that ball is thrown to you. So we're going to talk about something called late hands and actually catching with your body. Okay, I know everybody loves to talk about, oh, you got to catch with the hands, go meet the ball halfway. But why, why do you see it time and time again, these smaller guys, any NFL guy for that matter, catch with their body? So let's play this full speed. So he's going to be running this comeback, and he gives this little peek back move, breaks this thing off, and then is able to win and accelerate back to the ball. So you see how Tyree Kill caught that with his chest or with his body, right? So now one of the things that everybody loves to say from the time that you're coaching, you were getting coaches when you were five years old, oh, you must catch with your hands. You got to go meet the ball halfway, go to the ball. Why, why do you see it on Sundays? Countless number of times guys catch this thing with their body. Now, 
I think a lot of it is that the quarterback's throwing it with a lot of heat and they want to make sure that they secure it. But also when you are in traffic, fellas, that DB has absolutely no chance to make a play on that ball unless he places his hand in your like chest, if you will, perfectly. You want to have late hands. Now, if you're uncomfortable catching with your body, I'm not saying you have to do it. I'm not saying there's a right or wrong way. You can catch with your hands all day long, but you got to make sure that your hands are late. So that ball is thrown to you and you got a DB right on your hip, especially if you're a smaller guy, bigger guys are probably going to be able to cover more ground. There's going to be a lot of tighter coverage opportunities for them to be able to make a play, especially if you know they get physical and they get hands, you may not get the most separation, but we can't just quit on the rep. You have to be that guy that wants to finish the play. That's what college coaches are looking for. That's what high school coaches are looking for, especially if you don't pass that eye test. Can he make big plays or can he not make big plays? And finishing the play is what you have to do to make big plays. So when Hill catches this thing, he's late with those hands. Don't give the DB time to react. If he comes out of this break and that ball is thrown and he's running with his hands extended to the ball, what does that let that DB know? Ball's coming. I could just rip through those hands and that ball's going to be knocked down. But when I'm late with those hands... I give him no chance to play the hands. So, fellas, anytime we are in tight coverage, going over the middle, one-on-one with the bigger guy, be late with the hands. Don't give the DB time to recover. Let's play this thing again full speed one more time. Great job by Hill setting it up with that peak back. You can't just use the excuse that he's faster than this guy because this is tight coverage, and that's a very, very technical catch. All right, so last thing that short guys must, must do is not force their releases against bigger guys. So we got Doug Baldwin right here. He's going to be running a fade route, and you got obviously a bigger size DB. So on a fade, one of the common misconceptions is what? You got to always take an outside release. Now there are MORs, and that means what, if anybody knows what MOR means, they know this. It's a must outside release. So you have to go outside. Usually those play concepts will be like a fade and then you have like a five yard out from the slot and we're trying to read this corner. You go outside so he can't see the number two running the five yard out. So he turns and then we could hit the five yard out from the quarterback. So the MOR is a different story because you're probably not going to be getting the ball anyways. And if you do get the ball, you're going to be wide ass open because that corner is going to sit. So there, when it's not an MOR, especially on a fade, you have to take what the DB gives you when he's bigger than you. So let's play this full speed. So Baldwin goes attacks the outside and then is able to slip back underneath on this release kind of like a slip release if you will that's what i would like to call it so when you're running a fade it's all about being able to get where over the top of the db you got to restack it so when you line up and you're up against press you're up against man and you see that this db's lined up outside shade and it's not an mor i want to make this very clear it's like maybe a four verts concept you're running four verticals and you see his db's outside shade Dude, why would you take an outside release? His whole purpose is to protect the outside. And especially where you're lined up, bottom of the numbers, you guys see where Baldwin's lined up. Why would this DB play inside shade and let you go outside? Because clearly, you're probably going to be running an inside breaking route. He's got help. He wants to force you over towards his help, right? Now, again, he's probably smart in this case to play the inside because... I mean, if he's inside shade and you're all the way lined up out there, bottom of the hash or bottom of the numbers, excuse me, you're probably going to be running an inside breaking route. But if he's lined up outside shade like this, dude, that's a gift. You got to take what he is giving you. But we can pretty much assume that he has help in that case. So off the line, I come out to the outside. This DB keeps his leverage to the outside. If I just try to force this release, that DB will get hands on me right into my hip and squeeze me to that sideline. 100% of the time. That is his whole goal. His whole goal is to prevent the outside release. So he ain't going to give that up. So when you guys come off the line and maybe we want to take the outside release, maybe that's a goal. Maybe I'm just trying to attack his leverage, but I go to the outside, he jumps. I react and take what he gives me. Because at the end of the day, if I could get to this position right here where I have him restacked, who cares if it was an outside release or an inside release? If you're undersized and you let him get hands and you force a release, he will reroute you completely out of the picture, almost to the Gatorades, right? Now, another thing is that if you're running a route, like let's say it's like an out route, that's where a lot of people get uncomfortable as well. This DB's outside shade or you go at him and he keeps the outside leverage. Guys aren't comfortable taking the inside release on like an out route. But if you guys just keep getting forced to the sideline, that QB has no space to throw you on the out route, the comeback, the corner. You have to take what he gives you. So he shades to the outside. Okay, fine. I take the inside release. Maybe I work to restack and I run an out route. Maybe I work and he's hip to hip. I slip under and run the out route. But you have to take what the DB gives you. We want to try not necessarily avoid contact, but avoid as much contact as physically possible. So, fellas, last thing that short wide receivers must do, 
Take what the DB gives you, understand leverage, and understand what he's trying to accomplish. Let's play this thing again full speed one more time. Great job by Doug Baldwin reacting off of this DB, slipping to the outside so he can slip under. Underthrown ball, but obviously great job making a play downfield. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If uh, you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to um, leave those in the comment section below. Always appreciate the feedback from you guys, and it's um, always great to hear from you guys as usual. And again, fellas, if you'd like an eight-week wide receiver gym workout schedule, check out that very first link in the description below. I'll see you guys next time.